Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. Welcome to interstitiallungdisease.info. So today I'd like to discuss a topic that's really, really relevant for patients who get diagnosed with interstitial lung diseases, whatever that may be, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, hypersensitivity, pneumonitis, etc. This is chronic cough. So when people really struggle with their cough, and this is something that I've seen in clinic a lot, is that many people actually put down the coughing only to the pulmonary fibrosis. It is important to note that it's not always the case. So the cough can sometimes be related to other things. So when we treat cough, we actually need to have a very wholesome, multidisciplinary approach. We need to think about other things as well. Because it, yes, of course, cough can be related to the scarring of the lungs, to the pulmonary fibrosis, but it can also be related to other things. So some of these things may include for example, post-nasal drip, that is having a lot of nasal secretions from hay fever, from chronic rhinitis, sinusitis, just running down the back of the throat, irritating the voice box and making someone cough. So that can happen. That's one thing that we need to think about in on top of the pulmonary fibrosis, because, for example, treatments with nasal steroid sprays, which can be a low dose of steroid, can sometimes actually improve things quite a lot. Now, that may not be the case for you specifically. So I'm just talking theoretically about potential causes for the cough. So it's important to explore these with your own doctor to see if that's the case. Another thing that's really important in pulmonary fibrosis is acid reflux. So this is stomach, uh, stomach acid that comes up, especially at night when you're lying flat in bed or lying on one side, etc. It comes up and again, just irritates the, the upper airways and sometimes people just inhale some of that acid and it causes that irritation. And in some cases, this can be a risk factor for worsening pulmonary fibrosis. Sometimes it can be actually linked to a, a, being a trigger or a cause for hypersensitivity pneumonitis. It's been shown in some, some work that's coming out of the research right now. So stomach acid coming up generally needs to be treated if it's a problem. If it's not a problem, if you don't have any indigestion, any stomach acid that comes up that irritates your airways, you don't have any heartburn, so just a sensation of, of just a burning, painful sensation just, just around here there's, that may suggest that there's some acid coming up. If you don't have these symptoms, probably you don't need any treatment. But if you do, it may be a cause for the cough or at least a factor that plays a role in this, uh, in this scenario. And generally, the treatment is with anti-acid tablets, so something called proton pump inhibitors, things like omeprazole, lansoprazole, things like that, which reduce the stomach acid. That is the medication, but it's important to think about other things besides the medication, because in many cases, actually, acid reflux is mostly related to lifestyle, lifestyle factors. So, for example, having very late night meals. That's probably not a great idea if you have pulmonary fibrosis because some of that food in your stomach, if you go to bed with a full stomach, some of the food may escape the, for some of that acid that's being generated to process the food may escape, go, come up the esophagus. There's more acidity in the stomach. It comes up, it irritates the airways. So that can actually be a problem. The other thing would be eating a lot of spicy foods, acidy foods. Many patients report that that worsens their acid reflux. And you may have noticed this in your own life, in your own diet. There are things that you in tolerate better than others. I would suggest in these cases, it's important to try to keep at least some kind of a journal to keep track of what you're eating and what's causing your symptoms. It Sometimes it needs to be a case of self-reflection and just thinking about what we're doing day to day that may actually worsen our health. And I know it's not easy. It's not an easy solution where we just take a tablet and it fixes it. Of course, sometimes the tablets can help, but it's important to think about uh, the diet that you're having and if that's worsening the acid reflux. And of course, think about other things as well. So if you're having stomach acid, when you're going to bed at night and you're lying flat, if you prefer to sleep completely flat, of course, that may worsen the acid because it's there's a flat surface and the acid can come up easier, right? If you are propping yourself up, maybe with a few pillows or there are some triangular shaped pillows that you can use to put under your back so that you don't get a lot of back pain because obviously you may strain your neck when you're sleeping with many pillows. You may just slide down and then your neck is is just bent like that and you sleep in that position may be, may be painful for you for, for your neck. So that's not the best solution sometimes, but elevating your torso a little bit, maybe to a 10, 15 degree angle can sometimes help with the acid reflux in some instances, not all cases. And the other thing, the final thing would be carrying a normal weight. So of course, if you have a lot of um, fatty tissue around the abdomen, and I, I don't want to, to blame anyone for this, but it's important to be aware that obviously that weight will push down on the stomach and, you know, help move that acid up 
uh, through the esophagus and up into the airway. So, so you know, it's it's one of those things you may want to consider if you are struggling with an unhealthy weight, a bit too much weight, to consider seeing a dietitian, consider altering the diet a little bit. It can help a lot with a lot of health problems associated with pulmonary fibrosis. Now, other potential causes may exist as well. Sometimes people get a chronic cough from uh, some medications that are used for high blood pressure, uh, things that end in pril, so ramipril, enalapril, etc. So some of these high blood pressure medications, um, which are called ACE inhibitors, so angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. You don't have to remember these things. They are usually medications in which the pharmacological name of the drug ends with P-R-I-L, pril. These medications can sometimes cause a chronic cough in some people. It's not usually something that's uh, damaging for the body or something uh, that can be um, dangerous, but it can be very bothersome if you have that cough. So sometimes removing those medications, talking to your doctor and replacing the high blood pressure medication, the heart medication with something else can sometimes work. So discuss with your doctor if that could be your case. That's something that can be explored. It's not always the situation. So sometimes many people don't have a problem with the chronic cough and it's a judgment call that you will make with your doctor whether that's the case. Please do not stop medication on your own without discussing with your doctor because that can lead to other problems. It's quite important to never stop medication suddenly unless there's a huge problem, you're having an allergic reaction or something to medication. If you've been on a medication for a long time, please don't stop it without informing your doctor because there may be other issues that can come about. The other thing is uh, that to consider when you someone is struggling with a chronic cough, despite, you know, in the case of pulmonary fibrosis, is whether they have another chest condition. So pulmonary fibrosis, of course, is the main problem in someone who maybe is diagnosed with uh, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis in their 70s, 80s. But there may be other conditions affecting the airways that may have been diagnosed beforehand. So things like asthma or COPD. So if that's a ca the case, treating those conditions well with appropriate inhalers and things like that may actually help the cough. So it's important to think about that because sometimes people with asthma may only have cough as a symptom instead of the usual asthma attacks. That can happen especially if the asthma hasn't been diagnosed before. So sometimes doing certain um, spirometry tests with, the, with a test to determine whether people react to inhalers, that can be something that can be done. So it's important to think about these things. Discuss with your doctor what is your personal situation? What are the other health problems that you've got? What's your medical history? All of these things can actually play a role. And it's important to discuss, discuss, discuss with your doctor, keep a, a good open line of communication because there may be causes for the cough that, you are, that are not obviously apparent sometimes. So just exploring those things. Are there any allergies? Are there any medications that could be triggering the cough? Is there acid reflux? Is there post-nasal drip that needs to be treated? All of these things should be looked at if you're struggling with chronic cough, I think, in the context of pulmonary fibrosis. I wouldn't just blame it all on pulmonary fibrosis. Of course, that can be the main cause in some cases, but ruling out some of these other things because before you go on anti-cough medication can sometimes lead to better outcomes and less side effects sometimes, especially if it uh, relates to lifestyle changes that could actually improve the cough. So thank you very much for watching this video on interstitiallungdisease.info. If you like this channel, do subscribe. I will be posting more, more content about different causes and uh, conditions uh, which form this spectrum of uh, interstitial lung diseases and lung fibrosis, pulmonary fibrosis. Thank you very much for watching. All the best. Good health.